so we actually were uh, minutes away from booking tickets to Aruba. So we were going to go to Aruba for two weeks, do our games training in Aruba and then go into games. So first I was a bit, um, you know, frustrated that we had to go through this, like find somewhere, where should we go when like there's a lot more planning. But then once you kind of, I got to like, I kind of sat my mind of like, okay, we're going to go to Aruba, you know, it's going to be amazing. It looks like a really cool place. We're going to have a really cool games camp. So I just changed my mindset and was prepared to go there. And then, you know, this is the way we have to go to games. It's the way we can make it into the state. So there's no other choice. But then literally on, we had everything ready. We had agreed to meet up and book the tickets on Thursday. I wake up, check my email and I got basically a confirmation from CrossFit that uh, we got the, the exemption to fly in. So <laughs> that was obviously felt like very relieving in the sense that you know we have we run a gym here as well and it's just for the finances uh as, as well that so you have to one you have to be gone from like the business here for so long and then just the financial uh pressure of being gone for then two weeks in the brew box it's not you know it's not cheap there either yeah, uh not so ideal. no what are the, no, what are the logistics it, to get you here can you explain like how much does it cost? What do you actually have to do? How soon are you coming? Where do you stay? Where do you train? Uh, so we're flying on Sunday. Uh, I had my PCR test today. So you need to show a negative PCR test. So let's just like hope that comes back negative. Uh, I've just okay. read a lot about people that get like false tests and stuff. So I'm just a bit, uh, just freak out. Uh, so you need the PCR test. Now with the letter from CrossFit, um, in theory, I should be able to fly directly to the States. We book tickets now. That, that goes direct Madrid. No. Yeah, Madrid to Chicago. Um, but I think it's going to cost me probably like six grand in total. Uh, things in the States are, we managed to find a car for like uh, one grand uh, eventually, but like from the airport, everything was like three grand for 10 days. Uh, Airbnbs around in, the, in Wisconsin are like crazy expensive. <laughs> Uh, so we, we did get a bit of like wow um so it's going to be an expensive trip um yeah for are sure are you going to stay in chicago for a bit or are you going right to madison no we're going to ply 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 mouth plymouth plymouth yeah <laughs> yeah uh, so in wisconsin so that's a bit outside of chicago and like an hour away from madison or something i think okay. uh because we that's where we found like yeah decent airbnb in a gym and it's also quite nice to stay not in Madison because there's so many athletes and it can, it tends to get quite hard to be able to train as well when there's so many competitors in one gym. Uh, so we chose to go a bit outside for 10 days and then we're going into Madison on the Sunday and then registration on Monday. Hmm. Are there any complications of you going back to Spain? Uh, no, I just need a PCR testing and going in. Okay, so that's the good. thing. So, but then if you, uh, so if I were to go to Norway, for example, I have, uh, haven't actually been to Norway now for a year and a half uh, because you have to quarantine uh, there for 10 days uh, in like a quarantine hotel before you can do anything else. So that's just out of the question. However, now with the vaccine, you can actually go in without quarantine. So I, I am a vaccinator now as well. So this, this is like the logistical things that you need to sort out, like being getting the vaccine in time so that you're vaccinated before you go to the States, uh, you know, just sorting the PCR tests. And things like that. Yeah, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on is um, I was on your Instagram. You had made the post. Does anybody know any good gyms in the Caribbean or Mexico? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when you were trying to find that other way into the states. Yeah. And talk to you about that. But thank goodness, in the time we we scheduled this, they got that resolved. Yeah, it's very good. We were. I think the, the worst part about that was kind of like the not knowing. So CrossFit kept saying like they they seem quite confident that they were going to get it but at the same time it's like it's on your risk we can't promise it so we were like what are we supposed to do and it gets to a point where since you have to stay there for two weeks you know you have to leave uh, and we then set that day to be on Thursday so we were like if we don't know about Thursday we're going to book it and we're going to leave on the Sunday uh, and then basically the day we said like, like this is our kind of dead this is where if we don't know anything we have to organize stuff we actually got it on that day so quite lucky in that sense but I think that was the, the main kind of um, frustrating thing that it let let us um, everything now has been planned so last minute because we didn't know uh, kind of what we were going to end up doing uh, so this is when I met John which 
coach is now, uh, he's my coach and my partner. Uh, and he was living like the nomad life, basically, I think like three, four years. Uh, he sold everything and because he was coaching, and he was moving so much around anyways. So he found it a bit frustrating paying rent on his apartment when he spent like one week there every maybe other month. So he just spent all this money renting somewhere and he was never, never really there. So I just jumped on his lifestyle for like six months. Uh, it was really fun. So we went first, uh, we did go to the States in 2017. So this was then uh, like the back end of 2017. So we went to the States. And after that, we went to, we went to New Zealand. So we spent two months in New Zealand. We went to Australia for, for three weeks, uh, South Africa for, for four weeks, Indonesia, and then back to Europe. So we were for like five months basically on the other side of the world for for me then uh if you think like you know talking to friends and family uh so then moving to spain felt like home again because now it's just a, you know a three-hour flight home to norway wow that that <laughs> seems really awesome yeah what it was really of, cool was it like life-changing to just not depend on uh like a permanent fixture as your home I, I think the nicest thing was realizing that actually you don't need that much stuff like this, you have so many things like in your home and then just realizing that actually you can live out of your bag. So you don't need that many things. That was quite um, liberating in a way. Uh, so I think that was the, was the main, main thing that kind of like that, that I got out of that, if you can say like that. And then just seeing so many different cultures and stuff. I think you, you do grow a lot as a person when you, when you travel around and meet a lot of new people. Uh, so it's really cool. Uh, if we bring it kind of back to the athletic um, career again, uh, I did then realize that in 2018, when I was so close to making it, but didn't make it, that living that lifestyle of constantly traveling is, I think you can maintain your fit, fitness, but it's hard to improve your fitness when you live that lifestyle. So it was after not making it in 2018, um, I told my partner that, you know, I, I, I'd like to have a fixed base. I would still like to travel a bit, but not to the extent that we did before. Um, because it's just, I'm not going to make it to where I want to make it as, as an athlete, basically.